Uh, I'm actually not going to the Canadian Grand Prix uh, this year. It's just not one of the ones that was on my schedule to go to. Uh, in about an hour from now, I'm actually going off to Paris for a couple of days to do a, a talk around Formula One. Um, but that means I can't go to the race. Um, so it's got, I've got just enough time for one last walk of these two before I then head off to the airport. Come on, mate, can't you get down the step? Come here, Pharrell. <laughs> Come on. Come here. Come here. Come here, I'll carry you down. Wilson. Come on, you get down. Come here. There you go. Come on, let's go. Let's go. So what can we expect from an engineering point of view at the Canadian GP? Well, it's quite a tough one on a number of different levels. Obviously aerodynamics, which is key everywhere, absolutely key in Montreal. Such long straights, you're on full throttle for such a long period of time, you need very, very low levels of downforce and therefore low levels of drag to try and maximise your end of straight speed at the end of those really, really long straight sections. I think it's just shorter than the longest straight on the season in Shanghai at the Montreal track. Um, so once you reach max speed, Vmax as they call it, at the end of that really, really long straight with low drag and low downforce, what you then really need is massive downforce to be able to stabilise the thing under braking and turning. You need low speed grip levels of which you know, the big wings that you see at places like Monaco really help for. But you can't have that because it will compromise you too much on the straights and you'll be a sitting duck as everybody sails past. So as every circuit is, it's a compromise, but perhaps here it's even more of a compromise than normal. Lovely. Thank you, man. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks very much. Right. Off to Paris. But let's talk about the Canadian Grand Prix. Canadian Grand Prix is a great one, isn't it? It answers really all the criticisms that we had at the last race from Monaco. Everything everybody complained about, we have the opposite in Canada. The cars are going incredibly quickly. There's plenty of overtaking opportunities. There's normally lots of action. There's always some kind of drama, um, and it's just a great track. The walls, like Monaco, I guess, are very close in places, um, and it really pushes the drivers and the cars to the absolute limit. You often get cars failing, you get drivers crashing, so I'm hoping it's going to be a fantastic race. I've just been in the lounge here at Heathrow. Uh, quite amazingly, I'm in here going to Paris. Alejandro Gag, um, <laughs> from Formula E is heading off to Zurich for the Formula E race this weekend and half the F1 paddock were in there and have just left heading off to Montreal for the Grand Prix this weekend. Uh, it was like all my worlds collided in one room. <laughs> This track's incredibly hard on brakes. So many big, big stopping events at the end of very long, high-speed straights mean that it puts the brakes under serious, serious pressure. Um, the biggest effect of that is obviously heat buildup. So the brakes really have a tendency to overheat here. Uh, that has a number of impacts. When they start to overheat, they start to go through them quicker. You see this big, big clouds of black dust spewing out of the front wheels, particularly at the end of those straights. And we have seen a number of cars completely run out of brakes at this particular circuit. The other impact that it has though is that the heat generated, the huge amount of heat generated under braking dissipates very quickly into the tyres, particularly the front tyres. Um, and that's another area that teams have to really keep an eye on because tyre temperature, as we know in Formula 1, is so critical. And you're trying to uh, set up the dynamic uh, balance of your car to manage tyre temperatures. 
At Canada, you have to really factor in the fact that there's going to be excessive heat coming from the brakes as well. Uh, so that's it, talk done. Uh, it went very well um, here in Paris. Now just heading back to the car and then back to the airport and then back to the UK. Now, tyres. Tyres could be quite interesting here in Canada. Well, <laughs> uh, I fully appreciate that only complete geeks <laughs> like myself would ever find themselves uttering the words, tyres could be really interesting. <laughs> right, tyres. <laughs> um, we've got the same selection of tyres from Pirelli that we had in Monaco, but a very different challenge in terms of the circuit uh, in Montreal. Um, there are some similarities, it's a low grip surface, uh, quite difficult to warm them up around there typically. There's lots of slow corners as well actually, um, but because of what I said about braking and because of the incredible speeds, um, there are a number of differences in the way that these tyres will operate. Also, the way that they work in terms of the weekend is going to be very different because if you think quite loud. Think back to Monaco, uh, you know, everyone had to qualify on the Hypersoft tyre but nobody wanted to make extra pit stops during the race um, and so they were trying to... God, that's so loud. Hold on a minute. Oh dear, that's not good. Mrs. P's not going to get her mascara. <laughs> if you think about Monaco, um, the race was pretty much determined by the fact that everyone had to qualify on the hyper soft tyre um, because of its pace that it delivered, but in the race they didn't want to make at any cost more than one pit stop. And so we saw, we saw drivers going incredibly slowly, didn't we, holding up the race at the front. Uh, just to eke out the length of that stint to make sure that one stop would get them to the end of the race. In Canada, we won't have that restriction because overtaking is something that definitely happens around this particular track. Lots of opportunity along those long straights, and so we'll still see the teams having to qualify on the Hypersoft to get their way up the grid as far as they can because of the performance that it delivers, but we'll see them having a wider variety of strategies in the race, uh, and that should make it much more interesting. Uh, it's a circuit that's very much all about the longitudinal forces on the tyres, so all about braking events and traction events out of slow corners. Um, much, much lower demands on a, in a lateral sense, so no faster corners uh, which put lateral demand on the tyres. So it's about keeping uh, good traction, good braking stability, uh, making sure that those traction and braking events don't end up impacting on tyre life because you either lock tyres or lose traction and get wheel spin out of slow corners. So really demanding in that sense. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting. Friday it's going to be really fascinating to see how the teams get to grips with that Hypersoft tyre, what they learn about it, how they learn about its performance around a very, very different track than the one they ran it around two weeks ago in Monaco. Oh yes, Priestley's on the pole. Right, back in the UK. Look at the sunshine, it's lovely, isn't it? Um, what else does this Canadian Grand Prix throw up in terms of challenges? Well, it's really, really tough on the power units. Um, tough on the internal combustion engine because it's uh, sitting at full throttle for such long periods of time, of course, down those long straights. Uh, and equally on the ERS system. Uh, you've only got to go back a few years to, to remember Nico Rosberg having a significant failure of his MG UK and what that then does to the car under braking when the MG UK stops being able to assist in the braking events. Um, the very small rear brakes that are currently on a modern Formula 1 car then have to take over and as we saw uh, that what happened to Nico Rosberg that is almost impossible um, to maintain over a number of laps so very very difficult on the uh, on those components of the car uh, this is a circuit that really rewards the strongest power units it's also a circuit that punishes the weaker ones right 
that is about it. I think it's all teed up for a great one. So wherever you're watching, whether you're going, whatever you're doing around the Grand Prix, enjoy it, have fun. Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you tomorrow.